Hello and welcome to DoubleStacker.com's review of the Beretta 92FS handgun. This 9mm pistol has been sold and are in service in the United States for over 30 years. It has been the official issue sidearm of the U.S. military for over 25 years and will likely continue to be for many years to come. Many local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies have adopted some version or variant of the Beretta 92 series pistols due to its impeccable build quality, reliability, and accuracy. This firearm has been proven in various battle situations and conditions to include scenarios such as civilian personal protection situations, law enforcement operations, and overseas military conflicts. It has operated flawlessly in extreme conditions such as intense cold and arctic operations to blazing heat and desert ops. This gun is an excellent choice for those seeking a full frame pistol for personal protection and for collectors wishing to own a true piece of U.S. military history. The Breda 92FS features a lightweight aluminum frame and it's made from aircraft grade aluminum alloy which is super strong and really resistant. Uh, this particular 92FS has a black anodized finish and that helps protect it against corrosion and wear and uh, helps aid in the durability of the firearm. Uh, it's got <clears throat> an open slide design as you can see here. Now open slide design, a benefit of that is it actually helps prevent jams and stove piping. So that's a really good feature to have in a firearm. And it also gives you the capability to load an individual round in a chamber if you're, you know, in case your magazine is damaged or lost. So this just aids into the combat effectiveness of, you know, military troops and or police or law enforcement that are using this or individuals that have a need for personal protection. The 92FS has a external hammer and the advantages of an external hammer is that you can immediately know the status of if it's cocked or or if it's not cocked. So, you know, by seeing the hammer, which direction it is, whether it's, you know, all the way up against the, the rear of the weapon, or if it's all the way pulled back, then you know it's, it's cocked. So, uh, that is an advantage of having an external hammer versus an internal hammer. Um, not everybody really cares that much about that but I think it's a good benefit to have. Um, you also have a decocking lever slash safety on here. So uh, there it is right there. It's ambidextrous. It's on both sides of the, of the gun. So that's good. And <clears throat> an important way of determining if it's safe or if it's not safe is when you see the red, you know, obviously it's not safe. You pull down on the decocker or safety to put the weapon on safe. If you happen to have the hammer cocked back, like this, like I said, it does act as a decocker. So as you turn this, as you rotate this, it rotates the rear portion of the firing pin out of, out of alignment so that when that, if the hammer were to come down, you know, at this moment, you know, once it's been rotated, it's not going to hit and fire. But like I said, it does, it does act as a decocker. So, you know, there you go. It's, it's decocked. You know, the, the trigger doesn't do anything at that point. It disables it. You have a uh, chamber indicator on the side here. If it's protruding, then that's a way, one of the ways you can tell that there's a round in the chamber. If you're along here, and if it's protruding, then obviously that's another sign that, you know, you have a round in the chamber. Uh, but always better to be safe than sorry and treat every weapon like it's loaded anyway. Um, so, as you can tell, there's no magazine in it now. And, You know, there's nothing in it. It it is empty.
this magazine right here is an aftermarket magazine and I, I just wanted to show you uh, what it looks like it's cheaper quality than the ones you get actually from Beretta and I don't actually like these but I do use them uh, if I'm doing some kind of shooting where you know I'm gonna be transitioning or uh, I'm on the move and I gotta drop a mag on the concrete or asphalt or rocky sections or whatever uh, I'll normally use these because I don't want to beat up the Beretta magazines that I have uh, but all in all I don't, I don't really like these as much because you know the, the inner springs are normally pretty cheap and they're they're not as good as the stuff that you know the ones that you get with the actual gun when it's bought or the ones that you can buy from Beretta so anyhow the specifications on uh, the 92 FS it's 5.4 inches tall it's eight and a half inches long it weighs 33.3 .3 ounces unloaded the width of it is 1.5 inches so you know it is kinda kind of a hefty uh, hefty width and like I said it's 9 millimeter parabellum and magazines capacity magazine capacity ranges anywhere from 10 to 20 round magazines the Beretta 92 FS is a full frame pistol so if you have small hands this may not be the gun for you if you have large hands or relatively normal sized hands then this is probably going to be okay for you if you have your hand fully up on the tang and you have the firearm in your hand it's pretty easy to reach everything you know from this position you don't really have to do a lot of moving around with your hands you know once you have a fairly good grip you know right here I'm pushing on the magazine release of course there's not a magazine in it and have access to the decocker and like I said I'm pushing the magazine release again so you know if you have large hands this is a you know this is gonna be really comfortable this is gonna feel really good to you if you don't have large hands this is gonna be a little difficult uh, I've seen people try to shoot these that you know had you know small hands and it it, it, it was a fiasco it didn't really work that great you know they're over here trying to do this or you know they're doing that you know it, it wasn't really a a one hand affair for them so um, just to let you know you know if you have smaller hands uh, this may not be the gun for you so now let's talk about field stripping and reassembly of the firearm it's really easy it's not difficult uh, you'll notice on the right hand side of the firearm there's a release button and on the left hand side is a disassembly latch so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to push in the release button and make sure you have a firm grip on the slide and push down on the disassembly latch that's going to unlock it and then all you have to do is pull them apart now I notice on YouTube a lot people are locking the slide to the rear before they do all that that's not necessary it'll come off just like this so the next thing you're gonna do is you'll notice that there's a guide and a spring in here a guide rod and a spring in here so what you're gonna do is you're gonna push towards the front of the barrel make sure that you cover over the slide really well so that it doesn't go flying you're going to push to the front, pull up, and then pull it out. And then you just basically take the spring and the guide rod off of it and set it down. And next thing you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to pull out the barrel. Comes out just like that. And it's disassembled. That's it. It's very okay, easy. So reassembly is pretty easy. You're going to pick up the barrel and you're going to reinsert it back into the slide make sure that 
the barrel is securely in there. You're going to pick up the guide rod and spring. And if you'll notice, on some of the videos that you see here on YouTube, they have the plastic guide rod. Uh, as this is an older version, it doesn't have the plastic guide rod. It has the full on metal guide rod, which is very good. I like that. So you're going to insert that back into the spring. You're going to put it back in here. Apply pressure. Make sure you get it down on that notch. It's in there. Good to go. Not coming out. You're going to flip it over. Make sure everything's there. And then connect the two pieces back together. Put the slide back on it. Push back. Pull up on the latch and it's on there. And it's ready to go. You're going to want to check the slide. Good. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Alright, so now I'm going to give you just a couple uh, little historical facts about Beretta and the 92 series here in the United States. In uh, 1979, the first adoption of the Beretta 92 series for the U.S. military uh, was in some special operations units inside the U.S. Uh, they were the first ones to actually get it here in the United States. And that, like I said, that was in 1979. In 1985, Beretta won the JSAP, which is a Joint Services Small Arms Program contract to supply 315,930 pistols to the U.S. military. So that was a fairly large contract, and that's where the bulk of the 92 models came into play, the M9s. In 1987, Beretta USA began production at their facility in Maryland. And in 1989, uh, the Border Patrol got their first 92 series pistols. 2009, Beretta won, con won the contract to supply 450,000, over 450,000 uh, 92 FS pistols to the U.S. military customers worldwide. This was the largest single source sidearm contract awarded by the U.S. government since the end of World War II. Well, that's it for our review of the Beretta 92FS. I hope you enjoyed this review and learned a bit about this fantastic handgun. And I hope you like what you've seen. And if you have, uh, hit that subscribe button to follow our channel and stay informed of the new videos that we post. And I'd like to thank you again for watching and stay safe and Never take your Second Amendment rights for granted. Double Stacker, out.